Welcome, beloved viewers, to Animal World of Co-Inhabitants on Supreme Master Television. Have you ever noticed our furry and feathered friends taking special interest in certain plants in the garden, the park, or in the wild? Occasionally, horses, cats, dogs, birds, and other animals choose to ingest certain types of plants. If you have seen such behavior, you may be witnessing zoopharmacognosy, the subject of today's show in action. Zoopharmacognosy, a term coined by Cornell University, USA biochemist and professor, Dr. Eloy Rodriguez, refers to the practice of animals self-medicating to cure illness or to protect themselves from parasites. We came up with the word of zoopharmacognosy. Zo meaning animals, pharma drugs, cognosy to recognize animals recognizing drugs. Our clever animal friends may selectively forage on leaves, stems, roots, and algae to maintain their health. And in recent decades, scientists have discovered that these plant parts contain natural medicinal properties that can cure infections and disease. This intelligent behavior has intrigued scientists from various disciplines, including animal and plant biology, chemistry, medicine, and environmental science. Our early ancestors were always taking medicinal plants. And that's why we can today eat medicinal plants, because our ancestors, the physiology is adapted to eating these plants. The research on animal self-medication applies to humans also, and vice versa. I also grew up in a family where the use of natural medicines was very common. That played an important role in how I decided to go into the sciences and, and explore the, the whole world of natural medicines. Dr. Rangham, uh, who's a professor at Harvard, approached me one day on a very interesting behavior that he had observed among the chimps that he was studying in Uganda. And I, um, of course, was intrigued because I've always been interested in, in animal behavior and, in, and combining it with, with biochemistry. Then described to me this behavior of these chimps that seemed to be ill. And they were taking this particular plant where they would actually take the young leaves and they swallow them. My immediate response was, they gotta be medicating themselves. So I actually went to Africa and spent some time with Richard and some other biologists following chimps and looking at their behavior and discovered later was that there were about five or six plants that they seemed to take. And this led to the discovery of a, of a natural compound. When we isolated, it was red. We did some tests and uh, it showed that these things were quite active. That they would kill bacteria and that they would also uh, probably kill parasites. Chimps and other animals do suffer from all kinds of infections, from microbes. So there's gotta be a way that they gotta treat themselves. Not only uh, parasitic worms, but also um, bacteria and fungi, which is the same thing that we have. There had been other scientists who had mentioned anecdotally that maybe animals are treating themselves, but this was kind of the first study that that had a good behavior and some good biochemistry. Sometimes fleas, lice, mites, and other insects dwell in the fur of monkeys, and some species, such as capuchin, have found an ingenious way to remove them. Apart from grooming, they choose certain types of plants with which to rub themselves, much like humans use ointments to soothe rashes or infections in their skin. In another study that we did with monkeys, the monkeys would take certain leaves and they would rub it on their fur. We actually took a whole series of leaves that looked the same and presented them to the monkeys. So the monkeys always went to the right one. So then we said to ourselves, ah, they, there must be a chemical cue. And sure enough, there seems to be a cue, at least for the monkeys. If you rub some of this oil on a, on a bite, it, it kind of uh, 
relieves the itching. So uh, this is what these animals were doing. The one with the chimps, uh, Richard defines it as cultural evolution. In other words, um, not all chimps know how to do this. You can have within a group of, of, of chimps where nobody knows how to utilize the plant. So therefore, none of them will do it. But if one comes in who knows how to do it, everybody else then kind of mimics and learns to do that. It's an example of cultural evolution. Now, dogs and cats, they do it too, it's, but it's an instinctive behavior. How about animal companions like dogs and cats? Do they self-medicate as well? Well, I always suggest that for cats, people should, during the winter months, they ought to grow a little bed of, of grass and let the cat go down to the basement and let them chew on some grass um, because that has some kind of, um, of medicinal value. And we've seen the same thing in Africa where Africans have told us that you should look at the dogs. The dogs, and they went out there and they told us all the plants that the dogs were using or for medicinal purposes. There's many other plants right, right. that you could use or many other fruits that could be put into the diet. I would uh, try to develop uh, certain kinds of fruits, certain little plants that would be mixed in with their regular diet. Mm -hmm. I think it's important because there is a whole area being developed in veterinary medicine of treatment of animals with natural uh, compounds. So you mentioned a lot of animals that live on the land, but what about the aquatic animals? Marine iguana consume algae, and some iguanas have a red color. They get this reddish from eating alga, this red pigment. is a potential antioxidant. The origins of traditional herbal medicine are deeply rooted in the animal kingdom. Many indigenous cultures learned of natural treatments by closely observing the kinds of plants that animals choose to eat. Plants, especially natural wild plants, survive because they have these natural chemicals. Mm -hmm. These chemicals, natural medicines originated as a defense. Natural medicines have been around for hundreds of millions of years. They were first bacteria billions of years ago were making natural antibiotics to defend against other bacteria. So it's not surprising that some of the best antibiotics come from bacteria because they kill bacteria. So it makes sense. It's not surprising that just about any given plant should have, but it's got a, an active substance for defense, for survival, for reproduction. There's a very well-known study involves a plant that the uh, North American Indians called bear medicine. The plant is called ligustrum. The bears they would take this root and they would chew it and then they would consume it. And so the animals were sick when they were doing this and then they got better. The Native American, they have a whole series of plants that they... Uh, point out were used by other animals. People in, in the forest are very tuned in to their animals. They have great respect to the animals because they learn from the animals. Animals have, I would say, in many cases that the animals have given us many of the medicines that today are some of the most uh, widely used. If you look at the top 20 drugs sold in the United States, 10 of them are still of natural origin. The top anti-cancer drug comes from a tree. Mm -hmm. the, the, the drug is called Texol. I think we should be looking for the preventive kind of medicines. Instead of popping 18 pills a day, there are people that take 30 pills a day they're taking supplements. Why are they taking so many supplements? There's no reason to do that. One good vegetarian 
dish, just one a day, will provide all the supplements they need. Yeah, that's great. Um, I feel like a lot of the food found in nature is very bitter. So and we don't have much bitter food at, at the grocery store. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Well, early men and women ate bitter foods. Mm -hmm. um, it's only in the last 50 years or 60 years that we gotten more and more into a lot of sugar, mm -hmm. sweet carbos, and that's why we got this obesity problem in, mm -hmm. throughout the world. I mean, this kind of problem. Our taste receptors are now, oh, bitter, oh, I don't want it. But you know, lettuce, wild lettuce was bitter. As a matter of fact, wild lettuce contains a, a substance that kills uh, cancer cells and contains a compound that we think can, is good for leukemia. A mixture of natural products is far superior for resistance than one synthetic compound. There are certain instances where you could be taking 30, 40, 50, 100 natural chemicals in a leaf. A report released by the United Nations in May 2010 concluded the world's governments have not stemmed the frightening trend of large-scale global biodiversity loss. Commenting on the report, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon stated, the consequences of this collective failure, if it is not quickly corrected, will be severe for us all. The big challenge is how do we maintain biodiversity, mm -hmm. especially plant biodiversity? Our research has clearly shown that everything is dependent upon each other. I think we have to understand this complex interactions. So we need more young people to get into this kind of research to understand the, this complexity. We need to uh, educate our, our politicians because young people I really believe it. If you start teaching them early about the reverence for life, the reverence for the natural world, we won't have politicians that and are clueless and are driven by this very capitalistic, profiteering sense of thinking. Do you have any final thoughts for our viewers out there watching worldwide? I think it's the viewers that. Um, can make the difference here, how we should be saving the earth and how we should be saving the plants and how we should be educating our young. If I pay taxes, I want to know that I'm using it in a way that um, is really uh, saving biodiversity and encourage their young, their children, etc., to go into this incredible area of ecology, environmental studies. And To close, the fascinating field of zoopharmacognosy, or animal self-medication, offers exciting possibilities to rediscover ecological sound ways of treating illness in both animals and humans. Thank you, Dr. Eloy Rodriguez, for sharing your amazing research on zoopharmacognosy and calling us all to conserve nature. We also express our gratitude to all our highly intelligent animal friends for showing us truly natural ways of healing and living. Just like our co-inhabitants, may we always live in harmony with nature. For more details on Dr. Eloy Rodriguez, please visit www.plantbio.cornell.edu. Thank you for joining us today on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Up next is enlightening entertainment, right after Noteworthy News. May all lives be blessed with abundant health and inner peace. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash aw.